we got former University of Illinois basketball player on with us, Ebony Mitchell. Ebony, what's up? How you doing? What's up? Doing good. Uh, so a lot of things been going on out of Champaign, which pretty much stem from um, allegations from the football program. A former player called out the head coach and his staff, basically saying they were abusive uh, physically and mentally. Um, just a couple of days ago, the assistant head coach of the women's basketball program stepped down amid some of the same allegations. Now, I know, obviously, this is a different coaching staff from your time there, but um, just kind of speak to when you were there how things were, I guess, from a coaching's perspective uh, during your time on the coach law. Um, you know, it was a good time. Of course, you know, we were challenged mentally and physically because that mm-hmm. was her job to bring the best out of us. But, you know, you have to remember a coach's job is to bring the best up out of you, um, and it's their livelihood. So at the end of the day, every coach is dependent on the 18-year-old to give them a living. So, yeah. of course, it's going to be some times where you're going to be pushed to the max. And you just have to remember this is what you came here to do. You came here to represent yourself, your family, and ultimately the university. And to that point, I guess, when you say you're there to represent yourself, your family, and things like that, uh, do you think it's pressure on a player if a coach says, because one, one of the allegations that were made, a player was asked to play with like a broke toe or a broken foot or something like that. Um, do you think it's pressure on the player uh, because they're on scholarship to say, okay, I guess I will suck it up and try to go out there and play? I don't think it's any pressure, but if you play basketball or your respected sport for the amount of time needed to get a full ride to any major university, you've played through injuries. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of with the player and the coaching because I've never met a player that hasn't played if if they couldn't play. Right, right. So, I mean, it, it goes hand in hand. It's mm-hmm. one of those things that you can't really speak on unless you yeah. have the facts from both sides and right, you were exactly. there. So it's kind of like you have to sit back and wait and see how everything pans out. Mm-hmm. And That's it's just one of those things. The new president, he was saying um, coming into this situation, he was going to basically he's, he didn't take sides for the players or the coaches, but he did say he was just going to wait it out and see how things shake out. Now – um, I don't know if you, you've had uh, any communication, any connection with uh, any of the current players or some of those that were there after uh, who played for the uh, Coach Boylan. I haven't had any interaction, but I do know a couple of uh, players um, who are seniors that actually played with me and would share my time there. I haven't had uh-huh. a chance to reach out to anybody, but, you know, it's one of those things, like I said before, like it's one of those things where you just can't really pick a side. You just have to sit back and wait to see how it pans out. But I know right. I got a chance to, to speak to some former players, you know, mm-hmm. that played with me and even before me. And, you know, it's just one of those situations where you never want to see a university in a bad light. This is, yeah. this is a place where we gave our blood, sweat, and tears to, and you never want to see it in a bad light. So it's just, just really one of those things that we're waiting as alumni mm-hmm former players to make sure, you know, everything is good. But at the same time, we don't want a place where we gave our all to where, you know, future players are being mistreated. I know a lot of athletes, like you said, they they put their blood, sweat, and tears into the work. But at what point is it too much from a coach? Or if you're a player, you say, all right, you know, I know you want me to go out here and get my all. I want to get my all. But – how much disrespect or cussing or can a player take before it's like, all right, I can't take this no more? Well, you know, each player is different. You might have that player that, that can, you know, cursing or what have you might motivate them more. It yeah. might bring the most out of them. But you might have another player where, you know, that might completely shut them down. So, mm-hmm. I mean – When we're talking about a situation like this, it's all about the relationship that's been built between the player and the coach. 
it's the coach's job and it's the player's job to be an adult and be like, okay, I know this is your style, but, you know, this and this and this affects me in this way. So how can we come to a happy medium? And that's all in, you know, growing up and being, yeah, being an adult. Now, with the assistant coach stepping down, do you think that was like a red flag to say, hmm, something may be here, though? Um, Initially, it could be a red flag. You yeah. know, if you're just like myself, I think I just read the article um probably a couple of days ago. So initially, before you know, doing my race, my research, excuse me, um, and talking to other people, um, that could have been a red flag for me. But you know, like I'm gonna keep reiterating, like you, this is one of those things you just have to wait to each side yeah. of the story is is explored. Mm-hmm. Now, plan for Coach Law, who is now at the University of Tennessee. Um, how was she, I guess, her coaching style? Um, Coach Law, um, when, you pay, when you're playing for somebody that is passionate about the game, as you, um, she's definitely going to find a way to bring the best out of you, um, whatever it might be. So I would say, like, Coach Law took time to really develop a relationship with us as players to know what, which buttons she could push in order to bring the best out of us. Right. Sometimes we may, we know, we're still human. So sometimes we may not have liked the way she did it, but she knew by taking that time what she had to do in order to get us where we needed to be. Did you notice a change in coaching, whether it was persona or whatever it is, uh, in your transition from high school to to college? Um, yes. Um, you know, I, I went to Southwest DeKalb um, in Decatur. So my coach was in high school was a very laid back person. Um, didn't raise a voice um, unless she had to. She pretty much let us, you know, go with the flow. So coming from that dynamic to a person that knew if she had to yell and had to get in your face to, uh, you know, get you to to go, it was kind of you know a transition at first. But you know, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be the best basketball player I could be. So if this was the way to do it, that's what that was what was done. Well, Ebony, I appreciate you taking a little bit of time out uh, to chat with us uh, about oh, no this. No problem. Like Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Well, um, we're definitely going to keep following it. And, um, definitely think the coaching uh, relationship uh, with the with the athlete is it's pretty unique. It's almost like a a second parent, or in some cases, a parent. Uh, so it's definitely Absolutely. something we're, we're going to definitely watch. But uh, thank you again. No problem. Thank you for having me again.